Countless self-help books and guidebooks promise us success. Doesn't this get boring? My face is already cramped from all the happiness and my liver is suffering from all the champagne. But salvation is at hand. Sebastian 23 and his book, Endlich Erfolglos, Finally Unsuccessful, will help us out of it. Today we're going to take a look at that. Welcome to the Soft Skill Channel. My name is Sebastian Jung and today we will break with the questionable trend of self-optimization. We will no longer let self-appointed experts tell us how to think and live and work. We will limit ourselves to one self-proclaimed expert, Sebastian 23 and his book Endlich Erfolglos. Finally unsuccessful. Sebastian 23 is the stage name of one Sebastian Rapsal. And he does have a stage name because he is a slam poet and a comedian. And he also has been quite busy writing books. He has written quite uh, several, several ones so far. His most recent one is called Cogito Ergo Dumm, with Dumm being the German word for stupid. Um, he has written quite a few. This one, Endlich Erfolglos, Finally Unsuccessful, was published in 2018. As I understand, there also was a stage program of his at that time, but unfortunately I couldn't find a recording of this anywhere, so I can't say anything about that. Sebastian 23 is amazed at how we get slammed with self-help books and self-help advice. In Germany, he says, every seventh book that is sold is a self-help book. And therefore, they make 1.3 billion euro per year. It is probably similar in your country. It certainly is on the internet, because there we have articles and lists of tips and life hacks. Um, it goes on and on. Um, everywhere advisors tell us that we need to become better, richer, younger, more beautiful and what not. Oh, but all the while we should stay true to ourselves. Yeah, well, thank you. Advisors meddle with pretty much every conceivable area of our lives. Everywhere we are expected to become better to optimize ourselves. Now, Sebastian 23 won't have any of that. Instead, he explains to us how we can pessimize ourselves, how we can do things as badly as possible. And this video is probably a good example because humor usually doesn't translate well, so a book review of a funny book is probably quite pointless and a good example of badly creating YouTube videos. Sebastian23 gives us advice for pessimizing uh, plenty of areas of our lives. Starting with obvious things like bad dieting, bad thinking, bad dating, up to more exotic matters like bad internet surfing, bad self-defense or bad raising of children. Overall, there are 37 topics that he presents to us in his book, uh, plus a short introduction and a short epilogue. Those 37 topics are um, sorted into six, six categories. We have bad at home, bad with oneself, bad culture, bad thinking, bad outside and interpersonal matters, which is probably to give an example of bad assigning of uniform chapter names. 
the structure of those chapters varies. Uh, in most of them, at the beginning, Sebastian 23 presents to us some examples of strange and wacky um, uh, guidebooks, self-help books, some curiosities. For example, in the chapter about bad gardening, we get to know that there is a book that explains how we can do gardening in prairie style. For those 10 hectares of garden we have in front of our city homes and don't know what to do with. And we learn there is a book that um, translated into English is called Shade Perennials the dark side of the uh, of your garden so there are some curiosities there i also like the happy fork he introduces us to in the chapter about bad dieting the happy fork is a smart fork that will light up and vibrate if you're eating too fast a mixture of an iphone and a vibrator as he calls it um so there are really some strange and curious things we get to know about. And at the end, at the conclusion of most chapters, he gives us some specific tips, some advice for how we can do things as badly as possible. For example, in the chapter about bad dieting, he explains that we should focus on those things to eat that have really poor nutritional value. So, for example, if we are topping a chocolate bar with cheese and deep frying it, we are doing things, we are doing fairly well. Um, and preparing things in a bad way is certainly a good idea. So, for example, we should always bake our salad, um, but meatballs, we could eat raw for a change. So, there really is plenty of bad advice. In the, chapter, uh, in the chapter Bad on Social Networks, he advises us that we should correct spelling and grammar in other people's posts, because, as we all know, they are always thankful for that. Uh, this is a well-established strategy for doing things badly. There are also plenty of chapters that uh, differ from the standard approach that are special in some way. For example, the chapter Bad Craftsmanship contains a short story he tells us about uh, one time where he moved to a new home and he just wanted to build up his furniture, but things got out of hand. He brought four cases of beer because he had misunderstood some statistics. And he started nailing and, and drilling, uh, fixing stuff to everything. And he had to go to the hardware store plenty of times to get more wood. And at the end, some animals asked if they could get on his arc as well. And there he noticed that he probably had done things badly. Or there is one chapter I liked, um, which is called... Uh, mm, badly creating makeup tutorials. It just has one sentence. Create a makeup tutorial, which to me makes perfect sense. Overall, it is quite a funny book. It was very entertaining to read. It does have weak points, weak sections, but it also has plenty of highlights. So overall, I enjoyed it. I liked the chapter uh, Bad Craftsmanship best, but there are several that are very nice. Um, I think the biggest weak point of this book is the advice given at the end of most chapters about how to do things badly. Now, sometimes he has some, some funny stuff. I like, for example, his advice in uh, Bad Vacations uh, that he says, um, 
when we want to book our vacation, we shouldn't just go to a travel agency because this could end up going well. We should better go somewhere else. We should, we should ask for a vacation at the Baikal Lake. And if the guy is confused and says, well, but you are in the drive-in of a fast food restaurant, we should try to at least get a vacation at the Mac Baikal Lake. Maybe this will work out. Um, I did like that, but there are uh, mo mostly this advice is somewhat flat and unsurprising and not that funny. I mean, humor is of course debatable, but what I was expecting was that he would take actual advice from real self-help books and guidebooks and somehow mess with it, turn it into something funny, maybe by uh, overdoing it or by misunderstanding it, I don't know. And um, the, the advice he actually gives is in no way related to actual self-help book advice and I didn't find it that interesting, therefore. On the positive side, I'd say his advice clearly does work. And here he is at an advantage compared to actual, to real self-help books and guidebooks, because they often make quite lofty promises that you will become successful overnight and with minimum effort. And I really don't believe that. But I'm pretty sure my diet will turn out badly if I top chocolate bars with uh, cheese and deep fry them. So I believe that. There is some wasted potential here in regard to the topics he covers. As I explained before, he covers quite a wide variety of topics and there are plenty of unusual exotic ones. However, he totally leaves out the whole area of work and career. Now, some of you might say, yes, yeah, so what? what? What do you want him to do? Creating Excel sheets badly? Badly managing departments? Badly holding meetings? Now, this isn't a challenge. It's debatable whether there actually is a good version of those. However, the area work and career is quite important in uh, self-help books and guidebooks. It's, it's quite a common topic and one of the most important ones. And uh, since he criticizes this trend of self-optimization, in this regard, self-management, performance and whatnot are quite important examples and those he leaves out as well. And since he doesn't have all this get successful quickly, get rich quickly schemes. He also doesn't have anything about finance in here. So yeah, his topics clearly focus on your personal life and therefore he misses out on plenty of topics that uh, usually occur in guidebooks and self-help books, which is a bit uh, disappointing. But it is still a nice book, funny and entertaining, and I would recommend it. I especially recommend it to fans of guidebooks and self-help books to put things into perspective a bit. <clears throat> to keep us from getting too far into things, from getting too involved, from, to keep us from uh, believing those lofty promises too much, it's important to keep a certain distance here, to remain critical and skeptical. And I think if you can laugh about your topic, if you can take it with a bit of humor, um, you are on a, on a good way, you are not at that big a risk to become too fanatical. I guess watching YouTube video badly, uh, you, watching YouTube videos badly probably involves not clicking the like button and not subscribing to the channel. However, I would quite happy if you would do it nonetheless. We will see each other again next week with the Eisenhower Matrix. For today, I'll take my leave. Have a nice day. See you next time.